with the new release of VE 2025, IES have a licensed tool for compliance with Gibraltar Part F dynamic simulation models. An IES design model is not needed for compliance, but if one does exist, certain attributes will be overridden within the VE compliance application based on the NCM guidance to generate the actual building for compliance. The VE will then automatically generate the reference building according to rules laid down in the Gibraltar 2024 NCM Modeling Guide. We can create the geometry directly in the VE or import it for a quick start. For this example, we'll use the Import BIM option to bring in a GEM file. This could be a BIM file from any source, but for this example, we've cleaned up base geometry that was available on OSM, which is open source. Once we're happy with the geometry, we check that the spaces have been named following a logical naming protocol. Then, we group the spaces, for example, based on NCM activities, so that as we proceed, we can quickly assign data to each group, rather than to individual spaces. This data can be viewed and edited as we go, either collectively or on a space-by-space -space basis if needed. With our model ready, we switch to the compliance application for Gibraltar. It's very important to then select the correct compliance regulation. If we haven't already set the location to Gibraltar, we'll get a warning to do this. We can easily do it here by following the steps of the wizard. To set the building type, we just need to choose from the NCM activity database. The building category is set automatically based on the building type. If we select a single space in the model, we can use the room settings instead. For example, if a building has multiple uses, we can edit this at room level. Or note if a room is not to be included in the analysis. The NCM building area type and NCM activity work together to determine the activity assigned to each room or space, which then references the NCM templates to determine the occupancy and plant operation. With this done, we can use the Constructions button to create or edit constructions for our building. If we've worked on another similar project, we can use the Master Template Wizard to bring in those constructions to speed this up. Some of the constructions have specific requirements which we need to adhere to for compliance. Similarly, we set up the building systems. These always need to be started by using the NCM wizard to conform to the requirements outlined in the NCM modeling guide. Once we've set the base system criteria in the wizard, we can then adapt it to suit our building in the tabs of the main dialog for heating, cooling, DHW, etc. We can also duplicate the system and make changes if needed for different areas of the building. Thermal templates contain data under the headings System, Space Conditions, Internal Gains, Air Exchanges, and Building Regulations. Most of this data is determined by the NCM compliance settings and it cannot be edited. Now we need to assign our data to our building. This is quickly done with two tools. We use the Assign Constructions button to assign constructions across the whole building or to a single space, surface, or element. If we've created space groups that align to the regulations by activity, we can use these in conjunction with tabular space data to quickly assign the thermal templates to groups of spaces. The NCM guides do permit editing some criteria in selected spaces as needed by switching between tabs. It can be useful to look at the models for both the actual and the reference buildings to check the differences between these models, both the geometry and the data assigned to both models, the constructions, templates, systems, etc. We use the Building and System Data Dialog 
to make our final edits across four tabs, which differ slightly between Compliance and EPC. We complete the general information about the project and the certifier, and then the details for the building itself. For Compliance, we need to note what high efficiency systems have been considered, whereas for EPCs, we need to review all recommendations and possibly add customized ones. Then, we set the simulation settings and link in data from other areas of the VE if we want to. With all of the geometry and data completed, we simply click on one of the buttons to run a simulation for compliance or to generate an EPC. Upon completion of the compliance simulation, the Results tab displays an overview of the results, highlighting whether the building has a pass or fail, with a link to the compliance document. The results are based on the calculation methodology defined within the Gibraltar 2024 NCM Modeling Guide. For an EPC, the Results tab displays an overview of the key metrics from the results, highlighting the EPC bands. There are then buttons to view the resultant documents so that we can quickly view the EPC, the recommendations, or the supplementary report. IESVE simplifies both compliance simulation and EPC generation by applying the rules laid down in the Gibraltar 2024 NCM Modeling Guide. This means that we create a single model and dataset for the actual building, from which the software will automatically generate the reference building. One button then runs a simulation needed to show compliance and generate the required reports in the correct format. Or, in EPC view, another button will generate the EPC and its associated reports. This offers improved quality with less chance of errors and significant time savings.